happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope you all are doing good. I hope yesterday, our official start to quarter four, I hope it went good for y'all. Um, today, another asynchronous session, but our next class will be synchronous. We'll be back on Zoom. Some of you guys will be back in the classroom. It's exciting, y'all. Um, but for today, y'all do need to work on warm-up number 24. And we are going to be finishing up our pig unit today. So lots of lots of good stuff is going on. Um, today we are going to be talking about how we raise pigs. Um, so typically I start this out, we would be doing a pear deck, but it's asynchronous. So, you know, like love that. Love when that happens. Um, but that's okay, no need to worry. So uh, there's a term that we like to use for how people typically raise pigs. And that term is called a pharaoh to finish. And it's more like a system that they use. So it's very different than how we raise cows. When we talked about cows, we talked about a lot of people will focus in one area or like specialize um, either like getting the cattle pregnant, having the babies, somebody like buys the babies. Um, some people will do like feedlots. Um, some people focus on backgrounding and making sure that the cattle are able to try to gain some weight. With pigs, it's different. With pigs, because pigs grow so quickly, like, they're, they're pretty much ready for market by the time they're like four months old. That's, a, that's not a lot of time. And if you're bringing your animals from here to there to everywhere, that's a lot of time that you're kind of like having to use very consistently. It's very different than raising cattle. So because of the timeline being so short, most pig farmers will use a farrow to finish system. And that just means that pretty much the pigs are born and raised and live their whole life at the same facility all the way up until this little piggy goes to the market. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we call pharaoh to finish because pharaoh is the term for a pig giving birth. So pharaoh to finish literally means from the time that they are born to the time that it is time for them to go going let that one sit for a second. So the time it is time for them to go, they're going to be staying at the same facility. So another reason that a lot of pigs are raised in a farrow to finish system is because most pigs are grown on a vertical integration contract. So essentially, a vertical integration contract is where a company comes in typically like a large company with like lots of money and funds and pull, they come in and they say, hey, I know you raise pigs and you know that that's kind of what I do too. How about I buy your pigs and you raise them? I buy pigs for you, you raise them for me. It's kind of a, kind of a trade-off. And then you'll technically be an employee of my company but you'll still be doing the same things that you've always done. You'll still have your facility. You'll still have your pigs and your timeline won't really be much different. But the big company, the easy example is Smithfield. They're like, well, at Smithfield, we know a lot of people and we know a lot of facilities. So we'll do everything we can to make your life easy. So when it's time for those pigs, to go to the market, how about you send them to our place? We can handle that. You don't even have to worry about it. Just send them to us. We'll even send one of our drivers to you. We will send a driver to you to get your pigs and bring your pigs back to here so that when they're, when they're, they're done, they're ready to go. Um, and so it's, that's pretty much the way that a lot of pigs and even poultry, like chickens are raised. They're raised through vertical integration where this company comes in and they kind of 
bring everything together and turn it into this really seamless process of you're gonna raise the pigs, you're gonna slaughter the pigs, you're gonna market the pigs, and you're all gonna work for me. You're all gonna work for my company. That's, that's all a vertical integration contract is. It's just someone growing on a contract saying, I'm gonna do my part, and then when my part's done, I'm gonna send them to the next person in this little chain of command or in this little, like all these little steps. When my part's done, I'm gonna send them off to the next part. So like I said, Smithfield is a really good example because Smithfield is a huge swine producer in North Carolina and across the country. The Southeast, Southeast North Carolina, it's pretty much all pig farms. Pretty much all of them are contracted by Smithfield. When you go into the grocery store and you see Smithfield bacon or other Smithfield products, you can pretty much guarantee that those are pigs from North Carolina because Smithfield has a lot of contracts out here. Um, So these are some pictures of what the typical facility looks like for pigs. There's a lot of different barns, a lot of different areas, and it all depends on at what stage the pig is at in their life. What kind of facility, where they're gonna be, how many pigs they're gonna be with, all of that stuff pretty much just depends on the pig's age. So if someone, is not on a farrow to finish contract. If they're not raising those pigs from the time that they're born to the time they get sent off for processing, if they're not doing everything in between, then they're gonna do like most people do with cattle and they're gonna kind of focus or specialize in one area. So some people will focus on a sow operation, which is a female pig used for breeding. So you can, you can guess what that, what that means. So a sow operation keeps a lot of sows, a lot of female pigs, and they use them for breeding. So the pigs, the female pigs, the sows are artificially inseminated. And while they're pregnant or gestating, they're gonna be kept on the farm. And then they're gonna have their babies or they're going to farrow. If they're farrowing, that means they have their they're having their babies. And then the babies are going to stay with the pig, with the mama pig, until they're about 21 days old, so three weeks old, because pigs grow really, really quickly. So 21 days doesn't sound like a lot, but that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of time. Um, so a sow operation has the mama pig and the baby pigs until they're 21 days old, until they're 21 days old. When they hit 21 days old, it's kind of like when some kids turn 18 and their parents are like, all right, do your thing. And they send them off out into the world. That's what the 21 day marker is for piglets. They're like, mama's like, all right, I'm ready to get out of here. I'm ready, I got, I got things to do and you got places to be. So she sends them to the next little stop, which would be the nursery. Um, the nursery manages the piglets until they're weaned. So for probably about seven weeks or until they reach 50 pounds, until they're big enough to kind of like fend for themselves. They're not like little and weak and helpless anymore. They're, they're starting to get big. So that typically takes about seven weeks for that to happen. So, we got three weeks here and then seven weeks here. So the sow and the nursery piece are all happening while the piglet is less than 10 weeks old. It's only like two and a half months old. But again, in pig time, that's a lot of time. Those pigs are big at that point, y'all. And then once they hit that 50 pound or that 10 week mark, whichever happens first, 
Then they're going to go to the next stage, which is the grow finish stage, where they grow until they are finished. And this section, this type of operation, they just manage the barrows and the gilts, so the male pigs that have been castrated and the female pigs that have not had babies until they're ready for market, until they're ready to go off for processing. So some facilities, they, they, they can, or some operations, they may just focus on one. But like I said, especially here in North Carolina, typically they do all of those things at once, a pharaoh to finish operation where they, they do the whole thing. They have a group of breeding sows, they have a nursery to keep the piglets, and they have another place to keep the pigs until they're ready to go to processing. Because that's, it's easy, it's just easier that way. Pigs grow so quickly. It's just easier if you do it all in one place. And especially if you're a small scale producer, this makes things a lot easier. So I, I, don't, I don't know why someone would wanna specialize in just a sow operation, or just a nursery operation, but some people do it. So I did wanna go back really quick and show you guys these different pictures. So these are pictures of the nursery stage, the sow production stage, and the grow finish stage. And normally I would have you guys just guess of which one do you think is which? Well, you can't. So the nursery, or I'll, I'll start with the first one, sow production, because sow production was the first one on our list. Sow production, what they do is they deal with the mamas, while they're pregnant and while they're having their babies. And then they also keep the piglets until they're about 21 days old. So that would be what this first picture is. A mama pig in a farrowing crate to make sure she doesn't accidentally squish any of her little babies. She's all laid down and those babies are going to town. Those are some hungry little piglets. So this is, this is what the sow production piece looks like a lot of times. When those little piglets get 21 days old, they're moving to the next stage, which is nursery. This is what the, a pig's nursery looks like, where they're kind of introduced to other pigs that aren't their litter mates. They're smaller, so we can put more in here where they can be comfortable, they can socialize. And they're also at this point pretty young. So they haven't really gotten that urge to like figure out who's the top dog. So they're, just, they're all just kind of like hanging out, doing their thing, like just, just living life and vibing y'all, just vibing. When they hit 10 weeks old or 50 pounds, they're gonna move to the next stage, which is the grow finish stage. And here, the pigs, the pigs are getting bigger. They're going from 50 pounds to like three, 400 pounds. So we do have to put less pigs in each section. We do still like to try to like keep them together, let them socialize some because pigs are pretty social animals. Um, so depending on the size of the cage, you can keep how many ever you can fit in there. At NC State, our cages could only hold three pigs at a time, but it looks like in here, we've got at least five pigs in one of these cages. So it all just depends on how big the area is that you keep these pigs. And these pigs will stay here, they will be fed, they will be taken care of all the way until they reach market weight and where they can be sent off to be processed. So I also like to show you guys Again, really wish this wasn't an asynchronous day, but a picture of NC State's Swine Educational Unit. So when I was in college for a semester, I worked out here. I had to do a lot, y'all. I saw some things that just cannot be, be wiped from my mind. Um, but NC State's Swine Education Unit is a beautiful example of a pharaoh to finish operation. They do it all there pretty much, except for, except for the processing. So this is a map of their farm. So they've got like classrooms, they've got even got like a little surgery room if one of the pigs needs anything. Um, but the main pieces here are all of the barns. 
So all the barns are separated because of biosecurity. If one pig gets sick or one person brings in something that they shouldn't bring in, you don't want the entire farm sick. So a lot of producers will try to have multiple barns or multiple areas to keep the animals so that if something happens in one barn, well, at least you have the other barn where all the animals are still safe and healthy. So up here on this map, we have our farrowing barn, which is where the swine, or not swine, the sow production phase would be happening. The sows would be bred over here in the breeding barn. Once they're confirmed to be pregnant, they're gonna be taken care of, keep an eye on in the gestation barn. So we have, we kind of have a lot of barns dedicated to the, that sow production phase. In the breeding barn, we have the artificial insemination lab. We have the gestation barn where they go to just continue their pregnancy, which is three months, three weeks, and three days. That's a real thing. Pigs are pregnant for three months, three weeks, and three days. So they're going to hang out in here for about three months and some change. About a week before they go to give birth to Pharaoh, they're moved to the Pharaohing barns where they're broken up and they're put in their own section so that when it's time to give birth, they can, they can do this on their own. They can be at peace. They don't have to worry about another pig messing with them or any of that. When those little piggies hit three weeks old, they're going to be taken on down to the nursery. And you can again see we have two separate barns for biosecurity. So our little piglets here, they're going to hang out until they're about 10 weeks or 50 pounds, where they're going to move across the street to the grow finish units. After the grow finish unit, y'all know what's next. Y'all know what's next. And that's not done at NC State Swine Education Unit, so it's not on the map. Um, just like with cattle, though, when we're processing pork, when they when they go to be processed and butchered, what they're going to end up doing is breaking them down into wholesale or primal cuts. They're going to break. They're going to get the ham. They're going to get the loin, the Boston butt, the picnic shoulder, all that stuff, and then. They're going to break it down into smaller, more workable, more individual size pieces. They're going to turn, they're going to take that loin and they're going to be like, all right, pork chops it is. We're going to cut up the loin and make some pork chops. Um, so they're going to break it down into wholesale big cuts and retail smaller cuts. And then that, from there, they're pretty much just going to the grocery store. So what you guys are going to do for today is we do have a couple of assignments because we have our PBM assignment, which is a couple of multiple choice questions. It's like the web quest where, that you did for beef cattle, dairy cattle. And this one is gonna be for pigs. So you're gonna check out the PDF that's there and you're gonna complete the questions. It's part of your PBM. And then when you get done with that, there's two very short videos on how bacon is made and how ham is made. So I want y'all to watch those videos and there's some questions that go along with those as well. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to send me a message. Let me know. I'm, I'm going to be here at the school just ready and waiting to help. But watch the video. Check out your assignments. Make sure you complete warm up number 24. And from there, you guys are going to be all good. And I will see you guys on Thursday. See ya.